because James 5, 8 says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. The coming of the Lord draws nigh. Amen. Amen. I'm glad about that. Yeah. But it's bittersweet. There's so many that puts off their day of salvation and sins away the day of grace, as the Baptists say. And But one of these days, like God shut the door on Noah's Ark, that's going to be it. Amen. And we need to be sure we're in the boat. Yeah. All right? In other words, we need to stay in that boat and be tenacious like the third monkey was trying to get on. You'll get that in a minute because there was only two monkeys. Hebrews 13, 5. So the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Yes, and everybody said amen to that one. And we're glad about that. We see the things on the earth coming. And, you know, if we can't read the signs of the times, then we're, we're pretty blind. Right. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without coveting, covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Sister Mary, that's your favorite scripture, I know. Because God promises everybody, look, if you're... Names in the book, and you're a born again child of God. Through repentance, prayer, receiving Christ as Savior and Lord, huh? Following Him, and that's all you have to do. All you get to do. But then we, we should join hard to the church. We should get water baptized. We should seek to be filled with the Spirit. We need to learn how to read the Bible and study the Bible. We need to learn how to pray. And our whole life changes as we give it over to God. Amen. Have you done that? It, it's got to be 100%. He won't accept anything less. We give him the reins. So he promises then he'll never leave us nor forsake us. That's a great promise. How many claim that? Amen. But here's the problem. Even though God says he'll never leave us nor forsake us, we could leave him and forsake him. Right. Right. I said God promises he won't leave you and forsake you. But you could leave him and forsake him. Yeah. You didn't once saved, always saved. There's conditions to maintaining your walk and relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Right. He must be the first love. Right. In Revelations 2 4, this is the condition of the American church to include most of Europe, Italy, and on and on we can go. Of someone against you because you've left your first love. And even though God said He wouldn't leave us nor forsake us, we can leave Him and forsake Him. Right. And I suggest you don't do that. Amen. Amen. Because as a tree falls, so shall it lie. If the prodigal would have died in the hog pen, he wouldn't have made it. It's human nature to try to see how close to the world we can live and still be saved. That's worldliness. Yeah. You've got to come out of the world. You can't run with the world. I don't care what the modern day lukewarm church is telling you. If you're running with the world, you are the world. We can't put our okay on evil. We can't say abortion is correct, homosexuality is correct. Come on. That's right. But the church is a little bit separated from the world, but not enough. Amen. Amen. So the problem is, the heart is the problem of human, human beings, of people. Yeah. You see, man looks on the outward, finish the scripture for me, but God looks on the heart. So you can fix up the outward to look like a Christian, whatever that means. But then it doesn't matter a whole lot because God's looking at your heart. Yeah. 
However, if your heart's correct, you'll be modest in your appearance. You won't run around in Walmart and, 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 and rip pajamas. Amen. You are a representative of God. You need to conduct yourself best you can in a modest way and be a good example to those that are believers and not believers. Uh, the enemy says, well, we've got to become like the heathen in order to win the heathen. Well, why would they want to change? See, the problem is the heart. And there's only one solution for the heart of, of people. Acts chapter 13 and verse 20. Let's look at this verse this morning. So I, I've learned that that people do what they want to do. Yep. Let me find it here. Acts 13 and verse 20. The question is, is why do we do what we do? Well, it's the heart. The heart or the spirit of a person is what uh, entices, that's not the right word, motivates the person to do what they do. So, if my heart is right with God, then, then I, will, I will do what God approves of. If my heart is not right with God, then I will do what God disapproves of, and there's no middle ground here. So from time to time, we need to check our hearts and make sure that we're, we're walking humbly before the Lord and endeavoring to do His will. Amen. 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 Quick to repent, quick to say, I'm sorry, quick to say, Lord, help me. I can't even direct my own steps, and you can't either. So we trust the Lord all the way. Amen. Verse 20 of Acts chapter 13, And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king. See, they were wanting to be like the world, Israel was. Give us a king. And God gave them Saul. Now it wasn't really God's best to give them Saul to be king, but uh, God gave Israel the desires of their heart, but it was to their own demise. Right. The son of Kis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, now by the way, Saul committed suicide, fell on, a, fell on his own sword. My understanding, he went to hell. And so, when he had removed him, he raised up to them David, that's King David, to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, and look at this, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Even though David was flawed like us, nevertheless, his heart was toward God. See, it's all about the heart, everybody. You can give God lip service, but if your heart's not in it, he doesn't accept it. Of this man's seed has God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. So God used David and his lineage to bring the Virgin Mary to manifestation from which the Savior came. Praise God. Amen. And the Savior will assume the throne of David not many days hence. Glory to God. Now, everybody say heart. You know, I've rode horses my whole life, used to break them, that's why I walk with a lamp like Jacob, you know. But uh, my dad broke horses, and he had to ride horses to work. And one day he told me a story about coming home from work. He used to tend sheep, and it was cold, and he rode that horse to death. He rode the horse to death, right or wrong. And he said to me, a horse will run his heart out because that horse loves the rider. I've heard this expression, that horse has a lot of heart, like the racehorses. We've got children that race in the track. What pushes them to the limits is the heart. 
Amen. Do we have a heart for God today? That's the question that I'm asking. And if so, where's the evidence? In Proverbs 23 and verse 26, so David was a man after God's own heart. Yes, David sinned, but then uh, we all will sooner or later probably. We don't have to, but then we're still in the flesh and it has the tendency to do wrong. Think wrong, speak wrong, act wrong. And so there's where the covenant comes in to help us. Because God knows how we are. Amen. Doesn't give us a reason to remain the way we are. Because if we're growing in grace, you will grow out of the tendency to do wrong. Amen. You won't want to do wrong, right? Proverbs 23 and verse 26 then, My son... Give me your heart. See, that, that's the whole issue. And let me ask you, have you really given God your heart? The old timers in the Baptist church, he gave his heart to God. When I was in the military, the drill sergeant said, you better give your heart to God because your hind quarters is mine. <laughs> So I could say a word that's in the Bible, ass. Ass is in the Bible. <laughs> when I said I'd preach the full gospel, Monty, I'm telling you. But that's what this told me in the military, right, Will? They told you the same thing, right? Yes. But the first part was true. <laughs> Give your heart to God. Because <laughs> yeah. my, my hinder part didn't belong to the drill sergeant. But anyway, have you given your heart to God? Well, well, no, there's no well about it. Either you have or you haven't. Right. My son, give me your heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. So when you become a Christian, you give your heart to Christ Jesus. Now, the name of the Lord is Jesus, not Christ. I get a little offensive, uh, offended with the Baptists. Now, God bless the Baptists, but we don't give our heart to Christ. We give our heart to Jesus. Yeah. He's the name that's above every name. Christ is the title for Jesus. Yeah. I know what they mean, but let's be specific. Why is it that some preachers don't like to say the name of Jesus, huh? It's the Father of this, or God, or, you know, Christ. What? But Jesus is the name that's above every name. Which I get a little checked there. Because usually they've accepted the teachings of Jesus, but not him as a person. If you don't accept Christ as a person, then you're not saved. Because he is a person. God and man in one. Amen. So God wants the real you, which is the Spirit, with no reservations. Do we understand this? Your Spirit's going to live forever somewhere. Heaven or hell, that's it. And the destiny depends upon what you do with Jesus and how you conduct your life for Him on this earth. That's going to make the difference. Amen. And we don't want to rust out or burn out. We, we're just going to wear out for the Lord. Amen. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 now. Hallelujah. We must be thinking a little bit this morning. That's good. That's good. Romans 5, 6 to 8, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So he's talking about the Messiah here. Scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure for a good man, uh, some would even dare to die. But God, this is the kicker, but God commends or expresses, shows his love for us. In that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I don't understand that kind of love. I wished I did. 
But God has that kind of love, and we have it to a point, but not fully yet, I don't think. So what kind of love is it that, 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 that God would send His Son, Jesus, to the earth to pay the price for people that didn't want Him, that didn't want God, that Satan was their Lord? Well, God proved His love. Don't tell me God doesn't love everybody here now. He proved it that He did, and Jesus proved that He did. The Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth. That God does love us, but then He doesn't leave us where we are. Amen. So you must accept this fact. Why must we accept this fact that God loves us? Even when we were yet sinners, notice not because we are sinners. When you become a Christian, you were a sinner. But now, the Bible calls you Christians. They were called Christians first in Antioch. Amen. So, while you were yet sinners, which lets us know there's a change, a conversion that takes place the very second that you surrender your heart to the living Savior. It's a supernatural birth We have to accept it. Look, either God is or we'll all go home. Either God created everything in the dateless past from nothing but eternal substance or He didn't. Everything demands an intelligent being to bring Manifestation from nothing. It just didn't happen. You didn't have to be crazy to say you're an atheist. I mean, I had a phone call the other day. Well, this guy's an atheist. I said, well, that's too bad. So I don't have time for it anymore. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, well, the Big Bang. Wait, wait a minute. If there's no God, then why do you say you don't believe in God if there is no God? Shut up. The fact is, there is a God. You see, if there's no God, then there's no devil. If there's no devil, there's no consequences for sinning. Furthermore, if there's no God, there's no heaven. If there's no God, there's no hell. We're just nothing but animals, and when we die, we cease to exist. Is that a fact? Well, the Bible proves life after death. So that eight, there's no such thing as atheist. When it comes to dying time, they're all calling out to God, who they call God. The problem is, there's only one way to get to God. Muhammad is not the way. Right. Josephus is not the way. Amen. Buddha is not the way. Amen. Jesus is the way. In fact, we'll get to it in a minute. Let's look at Romans 3.23. So we must accept the fact that God sent His Son to die in our place on a bloody cross called Calvary. How many believes it? I wasn't there. The Holy Spirit was. Amen. And I believe the account. I believe the record without question whatsoever. The Bible is true. All of it. If we can accept the fact that God created everything that is, then the rest of it's easy. Amen. Amen. If there's no God, then why are you scared to die? Uh The fact is, there is a God. Amen. Amen. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and the Godhead had a big plan for you and me. That's good. In fact, it's so good it's out of this world. And yet people don't want God. Well, here's the reason, Romans 3.23. For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. All. Everybody say all. all. Now, everyone's born in sin. But young people are in grace until they get up to where they can understand what sin is. And then they've got to give their heart to Christ. Or they're not going to go to heaven. Do you hear what the preacher's saying? 
not my responsibility to lead your children to Christ Jesus. It's a parent's responsibility to raise them up in the ways and fear of the Lord. There ought not to be, are we going to go to church Sunday? No, children, get up. Eat some toast and some scrambled eggs and some orange juice. We're going to church. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Amen. Not optional. As long as you're in my house, we go to the house of God. Right. You men need to put on some pants and get with it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Because judgment day is coming. <laughs> and I want it to go well with us, everybody. Amen. But there's some things in our lives we need to get polished up a little bit. Amen. I know the crowd gets small, but there's only one way to please the Lord, and that's do it His way. Amen. So yes, everyone's born into sin. We got the problem from Adam. But then when we get up to know what sin, sin is, breaking the Ten Commandments, let's start there, then we can't save ourselves. Doomed to an eternal damnable hell in the lake of fire, except God loves us. But you've got to come His way. His format, His plan. When you accept it, then everything changes. You escape hell. You escape the great tribulation. Don't tell me you're going to be raptured in the middle or the end. Just be quiet. I don't have time for such foolishness. Amen. Amen. People don't even know what they've been saved from. Right. We've been saved from the wrath of God Almighty because what Jesus did for us on the cross. I can't make it more simple than this. But you must accept it. You must accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord, or you cannot be saved. Go on and live your way. Eat and drink and be merry because you're going to go to hell. There ain't one thing God will do about it. You know why? Because He created you with the right and the ability to choose. You must choose. God give us enough sense to choose God's way. This is the way. Walk in it. Then in Romans 4.25... We just need some preachers that will just tell it like it is. Amen. Here's the deal. Who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification? Let me ask you, who was delivered because of our sinful offenses? Can you tell me? Jesus. Well, it was Jesus, the Son of God. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. The Son of God. The Son of God. If you can't confess Jesus is the Son of God, you're not saved. Because He is the Son of God Almighty. And God has committed all judgment to His hand. So He's the one that's going to judge us come the last day. And I want to hear Him say, I know it's tough. I want to hear Him say, though, well done, you good and faithful servant. <laughs> You've been faithful in a few things. Therefore, enter into the joys of the Lord. Folks, that time is coming fast. Amen. We need to be sure that we're ready to fly. Praise God. Amen. So what are you saying? I'm saying that Jesus bore and took our penalty on the tree. And he absorbed the curse that we had. In other words, he paid up in full... For you and me, when we could not pay. But he did pay. And the Father God accepted his payment. Do you know how I know? Because the Bible says he was raised again for our justification. Yeah. That means that he arose from the grave. Yes, amen. Can't be disproved. I believe it. Amen. I said, I believe it. And I know you do too. But your heart, see, needs to be sold out. Right. You can't disprove the gospel. Uh-uh. The gospel will bless you or curse you. It depends upon what you do with the truth that's presented from the ministry. 
That's the reason God calls it the foolishness of preaching. Amen. Preaching is not foolish. It seems foolishness to the world. But to us who are saved when the gospel is preached, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. So we need to continue to hear the old, old story because it helps us maintain our faith in the living Savior. That's the reason it's imperative that you don't slip away. Now in Luke chapter, excuse me, John 3, 14. Okay, St. John. Let me back up to Romans 8.32. Did I go there? Let's go to Romans 8.32. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't want to skip this verse. So I'm talking about what was paid for our salvation. The Bible is. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for how many? Us all. Amen. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Well, he will. But the main thing is eternal life. That's the main thing. Amen. God sent His Son. He didn't even spare His own Son. And He delivered Him up to the cross for us all. That is, all that will believe. Amen. Amen. Have you believed the gospel? Now in John 3, 14, thank you now, and Moses Lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. So in John 3, 14, the Bible is telling us there that Jesus, it's a quote from the Son of God, that He must be lifted up on the cross. Just like they ran through the, the camp in the Old Testament with the snake on the pole. And I used to think that, well, when you go to the doctor's office, there, there's... There's a snake on the pole, an emblem, right? You ever see that? And it's nicely wrapped around the pole. I don't see it that way at all. I think it was looped like a worm on a hook. Because the snake cannot represent Christ, I don't think. But the pole did. So the pole, and what was going to be done on the pole, would destroy the works of Satan. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. A little revelation to me. You don't have to accept it, but I believe it's correct. And if those people will look at the pole and the, the, the snake that was on the pole that was impaled, they would be healed and not die. Praise God. The problem is many people's heart was so callous they refused to look and they died and went to hell. It's a terrible thing. It grieves the heart of God. But I'm glad that God saved my soul one day. <laughs> Praise God. I owe him. I owe him a lot. And I can't repay. He don't want us to. Jesus paid. Praise God. John 12, 32 now. St. John. So here's the deal. Amen. The Lord said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Everybody say all. That's the feminine gender too. Now was Jesus lifted up and nailed to a cross or not? Absolutely. Read the account. Even time change from B.C. to A.D. All of it. All the scripture is hinged around this subject. Because without the shedding of blood, there was no forgiveness of sins. Yeah. We've all sinned, therefore we need the Savior big time. And he wants us big time. That's why He came. To seek and save that which was lost. So you must first realize that you were lost before you can be saved. Right. Amen. And that part is offensive to people. But it must be proclaimed so people can come to a rational decision in faith. So the next verse says then, This is said signifying what death he should die. So he prophesied what death he was going to die, and that was crucifixion. 
Even Psalms 22, the psalmist wrote about crucifixion. They didn't crucify in those days. So how do you know? The Bible was inspired, all of it, prophetic. It comes to pass like the Spirit says. Then in another verse of Scripture in St. John 1.29, I like to minister a lot out of St. John because actually, believe it or not, it was written to Christians. I said it was written to Christians. Amen. The Bible was written for believers. Amen. Amen. If you're not saved, and I've heard about people that were not saved, but they got the Bible and began to read it. And they eventually gave their heart to God. Because they found out it's true. See, here's the thing, folks. It's either true or it's not true. If it's true, then it's all true. If Christ was crucified, if Christ rose after three days and nights, if Christ was seen of over 500 brethren at one time, if Christ ascended from the mountain, if Christ went back to sit on the right hand of the Father God to all of his enemies be made his footstool, if Christ is coming again like the Bible says, if God created everything that there is yeah. from nothing in the dateless past, if God controls everything by the word of his power and set the universe in motion, then it's all true. Right. If it's true, it's all true. You study one cell in blood and you will find there's life in the blood. Yeah. You study cosmetology, the universe, there must be an intelligent designer. There must be a cause. That's right. There must be someone that's beyond time that set it all in motion. And that was the great God Jehovah. No beginning, no end. In fact, Jesus had no beginning, no end. Oh, when he was born of the Virgin Mary, he, be, he was known as the Son of God. But before then, he was a living Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Then we see the Holy Spirit in verse 2 of Genesis 1. The Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters. Then we see the Holy Spirit coming on down on Jesus to anoint him without measure. Then we see the Holy Spirit coming on the day of Pentecost and filling 120 in the upper room. And they all spoke with tongues and prophesied, Hey, God proved Jesus went back to heaven when he sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit bears witness to us that it's all true. Right. Every bit of it. Yeah. Say amen now. It's all true. Yeah. To say it's not true will send me to hell. It's all true. Every bit of it. Did Elijah go up to heaven in a whirlwind? Yes. Did it Enoch was not for God took him? Yes. Was Paul called to preach and convert on the road to Damascus? Yes. Amen. All of it. Our souls at stake. Amen. Look at John 14, 6 as we're closing down here. Let me ask you this question, everybody. I realize we can't comprehend more than our seat can take. You ought to sit on some boards like I have in Africa for about an hour, hour and a half. I call them milk stools. When I was a kid, we used to milk the old cows, and that cow would throw that tail and get me in the eyes. And I'd be stripping the, 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 the milk out and that old cow would kick that bucket on purpose every time. Oh, I hated that cow. <laughs> My dad had an old cow. She would kick every time he walked around behind and he got these hobbles. You know what hobbles are? Like some of y'all wear. <laughs> and dad got mad. Of course, he'd been fellowshipping some spirits. He got upset and hobbled that cow's hind legs so tight she couldn't even move an inch. You know what happened? He walked behind that cow and she kicked with both legs. That old wall-eyed cow went to the sail barn, I'll tell you right now. 
And you ate it for hamburger, didn't you? Yes, you did. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, I got some stories, man. That old milk stool, all it was was just one two before with the flat two before on top, nailed together with 16 penny nails. You sat down on the stool and milk, and when you stood up, the stool automatically fell away so you could get away. How many have ever experienced a milk stool? You have? That's the way it was. You sat on them two or three hours in Africa, you thank God for that chair right there. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh well. What happened to the cow? Well, she became minced meat. Praise the Lord. John 14, 6, one of my favorite scriptures, and we can all quote this, can we not? Let's say it together. Are you ready? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. How many believes it? That's the deal. That's the truth. No other way. Ophrah, you're wrong. Sorry. All your money can't buy your way in. No, no. Larry King, bye-bye. There's only one way to God. I'm going to reemphasize that again. Not many ways. One way. And that is to the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. All others are thieves and robbers. For me to say there's another way is to call my Savior a liar, and I won't do it. He said, no man could come to the Father, but by Him or through Him. There's only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. He's mediator. He alone is mediator. Not the Pope, not the preacher. Christ Jesus alone is a mediator. If He don't mediate for you, guess what? It's going to be crispy critter time. Is it true? Matthew 28, 6, the last verse this morning. Next to the last verse. Sorry, I don't want to fudge here. Matthew 28, 6. Is it true? He's not here. He's risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Is it true? The angel said it was. For me to say there's no resurrection in Christ, if, if, if he didn't resurrect, then we're all going to hell. Then we're, we're false witnesses. Amen. So the question is, is, how does a person come to Jesus? A lot of churches, well, you're going to get baptized. Won't work. Water baptism is not Christ. You join the church. Won't work, even though you should be a part of the church, but it won't work for your salvation because the church didn't go to the cross for you. So, because all this is all true, then, the Holy Spirit's bearing witness, and let's put it this way. If the Holy Spirit doesn't convict the sinner of sins, that person will not be saved. Yeah. I've heard people say, well, I, I'm going to get saved later. No, that's presumptuous sin. Now you've got another one added to your account. Today's the day of salvation. Now it's accepted time. Today. We're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Today. That's right. Where's your heart? So he arose and he proved it was all true. So if it's all true, then we must accept him. Amen. Amen. So we must offer ourselves by faith. Give God the Father your heart. We simply let Him in to our lives. We let Him in to our lives. So let me explain this way. When the gospel is presented enough word, the Holy Spirit convicts the person that's lost and draws that person to Jesus. 
So if a person is not being convicted of their sins and godly sorrow is sitting in, repentance is granted by God, then <clears throat> that person cannot be saved until godly sorrow sets in. We want this feel-good religion all the time. Uh, we should feel good all the time, but from time to time the Lord deals with us about things and we don't feel too good about it. If you're not, God says, come. So, what I'm trying to say is that a person cannot be saved if the Holy Spirit doesn't draw that person to salvation. He that comes, comes to God must believe that he is. Now, how many believes that God is? Can't be disproved. Yeah. Like that son. Oh, there's no son. I don't believe in son. The son. <laughs> Fact is, I'm Indian. Because I decided to be an Indian. Is that right? Well, I don't have much Choctaw in me. I think I'll be a woman for a while. That'll... No, I believe I'm a woman, therefore, I am. Is that it? Is that the way you people think? It's stupid. We've gotten reprobate in our country. Now we've got some person, I guess it's a person, that was a man that got changed into a woman and running for Congress. Have you heard about that? If that's not bad enough, we got some of this coming behind the pulpit telling you how to live. Everybody go like that. We're done. We're done with this foolishness. Well, God knows how they are. Oh, He knows how they are. Well, God, yes, God loves them. He proved that. But if they don't come His way, they're going to go down there. You're judging. Call it what you want. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And it all depends upon what we do with Jesus. Amen. We simply got to let him in. So you have to hear the Spirit's call. When I was first saved, the old Baptist taught, they surrendered to the call. They were talking about salvation. The altar call, say call, was given. And then some responded to the call. God saw the heart that they were sincere. And he accepted them on the merits of the son. See, if you got the son, you got it all. If you reject him, you lose it all. The choice is yours. It's my responsibility. To bring you to a decision. And this country, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, oh well, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, uh, did you give your life to Christ? Well, uh, sort of. Uh, see, this riding the fence is not going to work. You're the hen, or you're not. Revelation 3.20, the last verse now. Hallelujah. Your lower posterity has taken all I can take. I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking on people's hearts today, everybody. Don't turn him away. He wants you. Amen. You're not accepting a preacher. You're not accepting some church. You're not accepting some denomination. You're accepting him. Amen. Where's he at? He said we're two or three together together in his name. He's there in the midst. How's he in the midst? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, is the representative. And you know it's true, you wouldn't even be here. It's true. He stands at the door and knocks. If any man hears his voice, so where does he speak? He speaks to our heart. Bypasses our puny thinking and goes right to the the heart of the matter. You get it? He said, open the door. So you open the door of your heart. He said, I will come into him. How will he do it? The blood's applied, the
The sins are forgiven by an act of faith and receiving the grace of God. Then the Holy Spirit can legally come in to live inside of you and you will be a child of God. Amen. Supernatural birth. That's what it is. Then he said, I will sup with him. In other words, after that, we're going to have fellowship. Amen. We'll have fellowship. And I'll, I'll tell you things that's coming. I'll be with you always. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But you've got to make that decision. And you know, it's not an emotional thing. It's not a, a hyped up, pumped up, hopped up thing. It's just bare faith. Trust God with your soul. He created it anyway. What's he saying today? Give me your heart. Yeah. That's what he wants. And some of you, your heart's become calloused because of sin. That's the only thing that can callous the heart. And we've got to take care of that. How do we do it? Jesus took care of it for you. He loves us that much. 